that um, that has offices in Madrid, Spain, and in San Francisco. And uh, we work with over 40 languages, and some of our customers include Apple, as I said before, Google, Salesforce, Medallia, uh, the Cantar Group, and many others. But those are the, the top ones, so those that we like to mention around. Um, well, we are here today not to speak about Benjamin and uh, me, and we are here to speak about chatbots. Why we want to focus on chatbots? Yes, we, we want to talk about the interaction between natural language processing and deep learning, uh, machine learning systems in order to build chatbots, in order to build non-trivial chatbots. That's right. We, why we want to build non-trivial chatbots? Because we are in the middle of a paradigm shift. We are among the first ones that are seeing that this market is going to be massive, and it's going to be massive cross-domain. I mean, we are going to have chatbots in banking, we are going to have chatbots in technology, we are going to have chatbots in e-commerce, uh, doing in healthcare, doing any kind of stuff, like support, um, running the call center. We are going not to see just a new technology, but we are going to see a new technology being put in place that is going to push some of the uh, human competitors out of the market. So it's, it's just really massive cross domain and just a massive land shift uh, in the technology domain and in all the areas of our everyday work. So that's what we want to speak about. That. That's why we, we want to, to focus on, on chatbots. Yeah. Uh, just for now, how, how is the current state of that, a chatbot that it's being developed now and it's being put in production yeah. now. Please tell us yeah, more yeah. about that. As, as all of us uh, know, the technology that runs behind chatbots is mainly uh, machine learning, deep learning. So one of the most uh, biggest challenges that we have to face in order to build non-trivial chatbots is the training process. And uh, as you can imagine, the training process for a chatbot uh, must be something like uh, providing typically a huge amount of, uh, of uh, sentences, uh, input sentences, with their corresponding output sentences. Uh, I mean, the input sentences are the sentences that the human person is saying to the chatbot, and their corresponding output sentences are the answers that the chatbot is supposed to, uh, to, to give. And the idea is that uh, from that huge uh, amount of uh, training data, uh, the system uh, is, able, is able to understand that given a specific kind of sentence, uh, it will uh, give uh, another specific kind of answer. Okay, mm, but the key idea is what kind of information you have to provide uh, for every one of those sentences, what kind of information you have to provide for those sentences uh, in order to uh, really uh, train properly your chatbot, in order to, to get good results in non-trivial uh, context, in non-trivial situations. That's the key idea. One thing there, if, if I don't want to focus on the training data, I, I just want to go for the chatbot. Can I just not buy some annotated uh, data sets? Yes, uh, of course, you, uh, you can find uh, different kinds of uh, data sets, uh, 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 open source or not open source uh, data sets. But the point is that uh, typically the, the typical situation that you will find when you are uh, developing uh, a non-trivial chatbot is that you will have to work with uh, a huge, uh, I don't know if a huge, but with many kinds of text many kinds of different tags, uh, formal text, colloquial text, text uh, in a specific domain or in, a, in another specific domain. Uh, so um, it's uh, impossible to, uh, to find a good uh, data set uh, for uh, every domain, every situation that you uh, will need. So uh, maybe if you are trying to do something very specific with a very formal language, a typical 
uh, uh, language uh, that appear in, uh, that appears in newspapers or scientific papers or uh, things like that, uh, maybe you can find uh, a good uh, data sets. Okay, but uh, if you are uh, trying to work with all the kinds of text, uh, colloquial or uh, no, uh, tweets, whatever, um, it's difficult to, to find uh, good information. So it's hard. First of all, it's hard to find context-specific data sets, uh, right? and Absolutely. it's also hard to find multilingual data sets. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, they are um, very uh, famous uh, and important uh, resources, for example, for in. You know? mm -hmm. But uh, if you are trying to do the same for other languages, I don't know, Indian languages or whatever, uh, it's uh, almost impossible. Okay, that's, that's good to know. So tell me more, okay, about the data set. We already know the data set, let's imagine we have one. What's the relevant uh, for you? What's the relevant information in those interactions, in those uh, conversations that we have in text? What does our system or machine learning or deep learning system has to focus on? Yeah, that's the key idea. Uh, it does, uh, it's, it's not only a problem of amount of data, but also of the quality of data. That data must be relevant. And as you say, uh, what uh, relevant data uh, if you want to, to try properly your task? Um, typically, uh, you can uh, find systems that uh, have just a, a bag of words approach. Uh, they only provide um, the set of words of the sentences. Um, as the information uh, for the uh, to the input uh, of the training process, only the set of words uh, without more information, um, and uh, we strongly believe that that's not enough. Uh, um, for example, you can see the the examples that appear here in this slide. In the first sentence, you have I need a ride. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the verb need and the noun ride. Okay. Uh, and that could be uh, uh, a typical uh, question, a typical uh, sentence that uh, could be given to a, uh, to a chatbot. And uh, maybe the, the good answer would be something like, okay, if, if you need a ride, I will give you uh, a taxi or something like that. Uh, okay, but in order to know that uh, in this sentence where uh, appears the, the verb need and the noun right, uh, uh, the, the good answer is given a, a, a taxi. In order to know that, to know that you must understand the relations between the words in the sentence. You, you need to understand that the verb need uh, has a complement that is uh, right. What I need is right. Okay. In the second sentence, uh, we have uh, the the word right and the word need as well. Okay, but between these words, uh, there is not that syntactic relation. So we have need, we have, we have a right, but uh, I can't say that I need a right in that sentence because there is not the, mm, the specific syntactic relation uh, that appears in the first one. Okay, so uh, mm, that's an example of how back of words approaches uh, are not enough information, information. That's not relevant information in many cases. Uh, if you want to, to build real, non-trivial chatbots, okay? You need more information. We, are, we, are, we have been speaking about uh, syntactic information, relations between the words, uh, and also uh, semantic relations. So, I mean, if we focus on, on a, even with these kind of simple sentences, if we focus on the above of words approach, if we focus to um, maybe enrich back of words approach with yeah. post tagging, etc. If we focus on an end grain approach where we look how close the words are together, all that will not solve this. No. Will not get us accurate results. No, that kind of information, that kind of natural language processing knowledge uh, could be useful. Maybe you uh, can improve uh, your accuracy uh, with, uh, with that kind of knowledge, part of speech, lemmatization for every word. Okay, that's true. But uh, uh, even with that information, you don't know the relations between the words. You, maybe uh, you can uh, solve several ambiguity problems. For example, the, the word like in English that can be a verb or a preposition, okay? That, can, that could be useful and uh, you have to use it. Uh, but uh, that's not enough. You need more information. You need a deep understanding of the sentence. You need 
syntactic relations and semantic relations. And that's the only way to get that accurate results. Right? Yeah. We are yeah. going to focus Absolutely. on accuracy later on, I know about that, but that's the only way, even with, with this kind of simple sentences, right? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, as for now, the current technology has gone up so far, right? We, we have some, some uh, things running. I mean, we have some products, or some chatbots uh, developed, and what you are teaching to me here, I mean, it sounds like a parser. There is other technologies, current technologies, um, yeah. technologies that are open source or not even open source, but you can rely on a parser that will give you that kind of syntactic relations. Yes, yes, of course, you, you can. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, all of you know uh, several uh, open source solutions uh, that you can use, but uh, as we said before, mm, those solutions have been trained uh, uh, only against in, uh, in formal text, uh, in papers, uh, scientific papers, things like that. And in the real world, in the real world in which uh, in your chatbot will be work, will work. Uh, in that in that situations, uh, you will uh, need to face problems that um, don't appear in the formal text. Uh, you need to uh, automatically identify the kind of text that you are uh, that you are receiving, and you have to use uh, um, a customized uh, linguistic resources in order to analyze properly. Because uh, as you can see in this slide, uh, in the examples, uh, mm, there are, for example, in uh, colloquial texts, uh, like this text, and, and, and uh, we have here uh, three tweets. In colloquial text, uh, appear different uh, issues that must be uh, solved. And uh, there, there are things that you typically don't find in, in his papers, in informal text. For example, the first uh, sentence uh, has that uh, payment wallet written in a strange way. Uh, you have to, uh, to solve that problem. Uh, you have also um, syntactic problems, like uh, the syntax of the second sentence that, that, you, that you can see there. Uh, where the, um, that's not a canonical uh, syntax in English, uh, and typically that uh, um, uh, doesn't appear in this paper, uh, or even segmentation problems uh, like the last sentence in the uh, in the slide, where um, there are not dots or blanks uh, uh, that we need typically to uh, split the sentence into chunks. So if we go then for open source approaches or for whatever uh, it's already existing there trained with formal text, first, it will be not context aware, so it will not be specific for, for the use case. Yes. I mean, I want to build my chatbot for healthcare and health assistance, and it will not work there. Yeah, they can. Uh, and then I will be finding problems like these ones, and uh, the lexical, syntactic, the segmentation problems, problems that are my team will have to handle. Ah, of course, uh, even uh, I don't know if it's uh, easy to, uh, uh, to, to solve uh, that problem uh, if you are using uh, a solution like this uh, open source solutions. And at the end, you, what you will really need uh, is uh, something that uh, is a context sensitive and can use different resources for different situations. So context sensitive and flexible. Of course, that's, that's the idea. So, but, and again, the old technology, I mean, it seems like the old technology, it's not enough, okay, for enough, but it's there, it's working, right? I mean, uh, there is some chatbots in production, there is um, massive, uh, like everyone knows Siri, Alexa, hmm. yes, you have to get used to them instead of the other way around. I mean, they don't uh, understand you fully, but it's there. I mean, the, the old technology, the, what we already have, has gone us so far, right? Um, what's, what keep, what's keeping us from going the next step? Yes, um, uh, the, the point here is that um, if you are using a Mm, a bug of words approach, uh, an old technolo technology, 
uh, okay, and that could be useful in very many in very specific uh, situations for um, very closed applications uh, intended to be used in very uh, specific uh, contexts. Okay, uh, but uh, in the real world, if you really want uh, to build a system that is able to uh, talk with you like a human, something that uh, is really useful in uh, uh, in, a, in the in the in the real situations that we really want to have the chatbots working. Something like that, it's only possible if you, if you really have a um, high accuracy. High accuracy, 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 accuracy. That's the idea. You need high accuracy if you want something that is not trivial, that is not a very, 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 very close to a very specific domain. You need something like that. Because without a high accuracy, uh, your system will fail in many, many situations, and you will never have the, the, the impression that you are talking with a, with a human person. So without that high accuracy, I mean, it's not enough to have 60, 70 percent, right? No. No, we, we need much higher accuracies for that, for what you just said, to have the feeling that we are speaking to a human, to uh -huh. have the feeling that the machine is understanding us. Absolutely. That, okay. So that that's what's keeping us, right? The, the accuracy. That's what is not allowing us to go forward and to have uh, all the interfaces drastically change from one day to another and never touch a button again and just speak voice commands, right? Okay. Yes, absolutely. And and again, if you want that high accuracy, you need natural language processing deep understanding of the text, uh, you need to understand uh, the relations between the words in the, in the, in the text uh, and not only, you know, the, uh, to know the, the set of words per sentence. So as we, as we say in the slide, the structure is, is what? The structure. The, the, the structure, structure. The structure, the relation between the words, that's, that's, uh, that's the important, uh, the relevant information that you need. So what we know the problem, we know the challenge, we know what we want to build. We want to build something that we are calling a non-trivial chatbot, a human-like chatbot. What do we need for that? What do we propose here from, from Bitex? What do we propose? We propose our framework for training, for training chatbots. That's a framework uh, where you can uh, get all the information, all the natural language processing knowledge that you need uh, to provide uh, uh, to your system, to your machine learning or deep learning system, all the information, uh, relevant, relevant information that you need in order to get good results. And it's very important to, uh, to say that uh, one of the most important features of this, of this platform is uh, that uh, context sensitivity that we have uh, uh, said before. Because in the real uh, projects, in the real situations, you will find different kinds of text. And you need to understand what kind of text uh, are you receiving. And uh, you have to answer uh, according to that uh, kind of text. You have to analyze according to that kind of text. At the end, it's not, I mean, it's quite clear. It's not the same to analyze New York Times headlines oh. and analyze Facebook of 13 year olds. Right? So that's, that's the idea. So we have slang, we have different text okay. structure. Okay, and that's, that makes it clear. Then we have domain specialization, right? If yeah. you go for the open, open uh, solutions, if you don't build it yourself, it will never be fitted to your domain. Yeah, that, that's uh, the idea. And of course, it should be multilingual. Of course, of course. Uh, we can work with uh, any language you need. Uh, we have resources for many languages, and we develop new resources for new languages. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's not only a solution for English. You know, uh, we, we have said before that maybe there are uh, um, data sets uh, available uh, for English or something, uh, but not for all the many languages. So uh, our solution is uh, multilingual. It's, uh, we can work with any language. So in, the, in this slide, we can see what's in insert or framework, like event detection, sentiment analysis, semantic relations, syntactic or syntactic parser, 
or Lemma Tiger, post tagging, all custom built. This is mm -hmm. all work proprietary technology, yeah. right? Um, but at the end, it does, it's what we are being speaking about. It's speaking about structure, it's about yeah. enriching text. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do with our kids, right? Uh, mm -hmm. A four year old, a five year old is able, I mean, even if it knows only 50 words, 100 words, but it's able to to communicate and understand properly, right? Because he understands, uh, he has a basic knowledge of grammar. We cannot go around that, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. That's, that's the idea. If a kid uh, is able to uh, understand uh, a sentence uh, with a specific uh, kind of uh, structure, uh, okay? So uh, I don't know if uh, we can compare the, the the process of uh, of uh, of learning a language in a kid uh, in a machine I don't know but uh, uh, I'm sure that we need uh, some uh, similar uh, information some similar structures in the, in if you if we really want to teach the language to the machine so okay. our, our framework provides that and, information uh, and that's exactly the kind of information that our framework provides okay. and then again. It's not only that it structure text and provides additional information. What about the time that it will take me to have that human, almost human-like chatbot? Oh, of course, with this uh, with this approach, you will save time uh, because uh, we will, we will, with a more trivial approach. Okay, you will start maybe with a back of words uh, approach. You will get a low accuracy. Uh, and then you, you have to figure out, uh, okay, uh, I need, maybe I need to, uh, to add more data or maybe I need to, uh, to add new features, what kind of features, what kind of information is relevant. Uh, all those problems uh, are not problems in this, uh, uh, with this approach. Uh, we, um, from the beginning, we provide all the information, all the relevant information that you need in order to build uh, your chatbot. You will save more uh, time uh, uh, working with this approach. So we have more accurate information coming in. We save time. So we have a faster time to market. I mean, our product will get there absolutely not in five years, but in a much shorter period. And on top of that, the first users that work with it, they will be surprised. I mean, they will yeah. have that, they will feel that the machine is understanding them. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah that, that's, 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 that's the challenge and that's what uh, we, we really think that we can do with, uh, with this approach. But, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm eager, I, I have learned a lot about natural language processing, but I don't want to change my pipeline, I don't want to incorporate this framework in, in a step, as a step between my raw text and my deep learning process. I don't want to do that. I want to keep everything as it is. Will I be able to build a chatbot that it's not trivial? No, 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 because uh, uh, from the beginning, you, you uh, don't have the information that, it is, uh, that the system needs to, to understand uh, the problem and to, to get good results. You, uh, um, you don't have, uh, it's not a matter that you don't have enough information, you don't, ha don't have the kind of information that you need to uh, understand uh, uh, the problem. So uh, you need to incorporate a uh, deep understanding of the sentence if you really want something with high accuracy, with uh, good results, non-trivial results. Oops. That's great to know. I mean, as we say, it's not, we here don't, don't want to say that without this, you will not have a chatbot at all. But you don't, will not have the chatbot that users are expecting. Yeah. You will not have the chatbot that will have your users calling a call center and speaking to a robot and not even knowing that. You will not have a chatbot that it's able to, to, to be as accurate and give as much confidence as a human doctor or as a yeah, human that's, uh, that's a, banker, yeah. right? You will not speak to them because if you cross three sentences and one of them is not accurate, I mean, you, will, you will know that there is a machine behind that. Yeah. What we want to build is something that goes beyond that, something that, that works as a 
your chatbot becomes human. And it's not only about chatbots, right? No, no, not only because uh, with this framework, we are able to uh, train every machine learning, deep learning system, system that you uh, need to train. You know? uh, at the end, uh, the technology behind chatbots is uh, machine learning, deep learning. So uh, uh, you will be able to try and, uh, all kinds of applications that uh, uh, that have machine learning, deep learning technology behind. So we, we can build, uh, for example, we can improve self-driven cars, right? To to read, to read text messages, for example. For example. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a really flexible framework. That's flexible, accurate, and fast. Mm, yeah, flexible uh, context sensitive. Yeah. Okay. So that that's it. Uh, this is what we wanted to share with you, uh, guys. So please uh, feel free. We have around ten minutes of of questions. So feel free to write in the comments, uh, and we will try to answer all your questions. And of course, please uh, contact us speak to us about your your ideas your use cases and we will and we will okay there we have one second okay yeah let's make it bigger what type of dialogue management do we use oh yeah um, the, um, the idea here is that um, our our framework is uh, um, not intended properly to build uh, to build a chatbot. Uh, it's intended to analyze the text uh, that you will provide to your chatbots uh, in, uh, in order to to train it. So uh, properly, we 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 don't. Uh, use any dialogue system uh, because uh, I think that that's uh, the, the part of the of, uh, of the chatbot uh, development. We just provide the right information that your chatbot needs uh, in order to be trained. So we, we analyze. We are not only processing specialists. We analyze the text, uh, that, uh, the input sentences that uh, your chatbot will receive. Um, in so, interaction. So we help the chatbot to understand. That's a, that's a way to say. Uh, we, we, we have to understand the text and the, the, the dialogue is uh, on the path of the, of the proper chatbot development. Great question. Got us speaking a while. Uh, any other questions around? So we have it quite clear. So please, if you want to talk to us in, in a one-to-one -one conversation about the same cases, about training and your deep learning on machine learning frameworks, feel, please feel free to contact us. This session is being recorded, so we will distribute it around. Feel free to send it to your colleagues. Uh, the same goes for the slides. And Thank you. Thank you a lot for, for your time today. And we expect you to yeah. uh, we expect to see you in, in other in other sessions on the subject. Have a great day and goodbye. Okay, so uh, goodbye. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you and bye bye.